Okay, so we are back in Blender and in this video we will be exporting all of the assets that we've created ready for the Unreal Engine first of all. So just to go back through these in order, I'm actually going to start with the rocks. It doesn't really matter what we export. Um, so I'm going to turn on the rock collection though and select the rock one, making sure that we only have that single object selected. If you don't have any shortcuts set, then you would go to File, Export, and then Export as an FBX. So this is everything that I've detailed already in the beginning of this playlist, but just to recap. And then if you do want to set these, because these are things that you're going to be using quite a lot, uh, I've made sure to set these to a shortcut key. You can do that by right clicking and add or change the shortcut that you have here. So yours should say add shortcut if you don't have one already. And then just simply press the key bindings that you want to assign that to. I've done something very similar for import. So I've made that alt and numpad minus. So for all of these going forward, I'm just going to hit the shortcut key that I'm familiar with, which for me is Alt and Numpad Plus. That will bring up this window here. You just need to select the folder that you want to store this in. So for me, I'm going to put this on the desktop. So I have this selected over here and we just need to give this a simple name. So I'm going to call this one SM underscore Rock One. From the beginning of this playlist, I recorded the exports process before they'd actually fully released Blender 2.8 and you'll notice that the interface has changed a little bit. However, everything's actually exactly the same. They've just pretty much moved things around. So you've got the same options of the geometry, the armature and things like that, which we're not going to need to worry about because all of that will be controlled by the presets that I showed you how to create in that video. And again, that is exactly the same process. You just need to look for where the buttons have been moved to. So like I said, this is going to be for the Unreal Engine. So I'm going to use my UE4 preset. We can see down here the transforms have changed to be the Unreal specific transforms. And make sure that you, if you haven't already, or if this isn't part of the preset, that you tick the selected object only, otherwise it's going to export everything which isn't hidden in the scene, so that could get quite messy. With that done though, we're going to press export FBX and that is now ready to go on the desktop. So I'm going to hide that one. So I'll do the same thing again, use my export shortcut. I'm going to change the name down here to SM underscore rock 2. Make sure that we go to the operator presets and select Unreal Engine 4 again. Again, just making sure that selected objects only is ticked. All of these will be fine and we can export that. Uh, now I won't do that for every single object. I can see that getting a little bit boring, but just do the same thing, export all of these. So we've got SM fence, SM underscore bucket and SM underscore post uh, as all of the names are here. Just export those in the same way in the destination of your choice. Okay, so I'm now inside of the Unreal Engine. I've created a brand new project with no starter content, maximum quality, and it's a blank blueprint games template. So pretty much nothing in here at all, just in case you're wondering what my settings were. Now to begin with, I'm just going to create some very simple folders here, just to keep things slightly tidy and to keep with the standard process you normally would. So I'm gonna create my assets folder and inside of the assets folder, we're gonna have a material folder, a meshes folder and a texture folder. With that done, I'm going to go to the Meshes folder. I'm going to right click inside of here and I'm going to choose the Import to Game Assets Meshes selection. You'll get the small pop-up window here giving you the option to select where you want to import the assets from. Again, I've stored all of mine on the desktop and you can see here we've got all of the assets that we've exported from Blender. So we can import these separately, but I'm just going to select everything in one go, including the textures and open all of these. This will give you an option to generate the collision, which isn't overly important for our project, but we can do that. It's going to give you the option here, which we want to import textures, which is correct, and also to create new materials. So I'm actually going to tell it not to create the materials because we'll get one for all of the objects and we can create and assign our materials separately in just a moment. Uh, with that done, though, we can select the import all option. Otherwise, you're going to have to do this for every separate asset and just allow it to do its thing. So because they all use the same texture, it's going to try and bring them in the T underscore grid in a few times. So we can just say uh, to note or to override this, we only need one of them. And here we have our assets. So I'll grab the two textures that I brought in, which is our T underscore grid and T underscore grid met rough and put this in the textures folder, select the move here, uh, and we can start creating the material that we're using for all of the objects. So I'm just going to drag the bucket straight into the scene here. We can see that the scale of this is perfect as will be all of the other objects. So they all kind of line up together quite nicely. With that done though, a very easy way to create a material for this is to just grab our T underscore grid texture and just drop this onto the asset. 
you can see that this is created a new material. So I'm going to call this one M underscore grid. And then again, I'm going to drop this into the materials folder. Now, if we go into the materials folder, we'll open this material and I'll just drop this up here. This brings us back to what I mentioned previously in the last video is that everything in this uh, model now has a little bit of a kind of gloss to it. Uh, and that is exactly why we have our second texture. So if we grab the second texture and we'll just drag this up to the M underscore grid material and just drop this into the graph. Now what we want to do is we want this to affect the metallic and the roughness properties inside of our material. So the color is coming from the base grid textures. That's what we have hooked up here. And then we have the default values for metallic, specular, and roughness are all going to be zero to begin with, which in Unreal gives you this kind of plasticky gloss sheen to it. So we're going to get rid of that. The first thing, like I've said, is that metallic, the highest value, will be the white colors. So we're just going to drop this straight into our metallic value. So that's going to make those correct. So we can see that this now looks like a kind of brushed metal. And that's because we haven't worked out the roughness colors correctly. Now to use the same texture for the roughness, uh, if we were to just drop this straight in, obviously the roughness is black. So none of this is going to be rough and we're going to get a fully shiny kind of uh, material appearing. And that is, that is not what we want at all. So what we need to do for the roughness is we want to get the exact inverse colors of these. So what we're going to do is off of the texture sample, we're going to say one minus. And that will give us a minus one node, which in terms of this is just going to flip any white into black and black into white, which means that all of this will be our highest roughness value. And all of this down here will be the lowest roughness value, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to plug that into our roughness. And then we can see in our example over here, the metals have a nice metal reflection to them. And then all of the woods are nice and flat. So if we make sure that we apply and save our material as it is, we can come back into the scene and you can see here now that the metal band and the nails have the reflection that we want. Uh, we can see the auto exposures on, which is horrendous. So we're just going to come into the project settings and make sure that we disable auto exposure. If you ever wonder why your colors are getting blown out over time, that's because of auto exposure. So we're just gonna turn that off and now we get the correct colors. And yeah, so we can see that the flat non-reflective surfaces are correct as are the fully reflective surfaces. So with that done we can go into all of the meshes, we're going to come in and we're going to apply that material to all of our assets so that we don't need to do this time and time again. Okay so I've applied that to all of the assets and we can see that we have some shiny rocks. Uh, so SM rock 1 and 2 both have a lot of shine to them. Reason for that is if we go to our UV option, we can go to UV channel one, which is the actual UV mapping that we've done inside of Blender. And we can see that we've assigned it to the top right hand corner, which just means that I've overlooked. I thought because it was a gray that that was a metal. So I've uh, made it fully metallic. And the same is gonna be for our channel one here. So this is gonna be a really nice simple fix. We're gonna pop back over to our 2D art package. We're gonna make that square black so that it will be designated as a roughness channel and bring that back in. Now, one other thing I noticed, it's not actually an error as such. Uh, the actual material is perfectly fine here for the fence. This was just some bad color picking on my, my behalf. It looks like everything's black. So I'm gonna change that color as well. Okay, so back in Krita, I'm gonna fix the roughness first of all. So I'm just gonna get the marquee tool again. I'm gonna grab everything here. Um, remember it's that top right hand square that we want to be black. And then just fill that in with the black color there. Uh, I'm going to save this back out to the exact same location, same name, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Before doing that, I'm going to come back in here, and this is the dark color, which looks fine on the 2D texture, but is a little bit too dark in the engine. So I'm going to grab this box, and I'm just going to recolor this. So I'll pick something fairly close, but um, I'll just make it a lot lighter, or at least a little bit lighter. I don't want it to be exactly the same as the others, but I do want it to show fairly clearly in the scene. So I think that should be perfectly fine. So again, I'm just gonna save this in the same location. So T underscore grid on the desktop with the exact same name, and then head back over to Unreal. Okay, so back in the Unreal Engine, uh, this has actually been quite helpful because this allows me to show one other thing. And that is that if you've kept everything in the same spot, what we can do is we can just press uh, right click on the texture we want to update and re-import. It will find the location if it hasn't changed and if the name's the same. And we can see that the color on the top left hand bit of that grid has been updated. And then I'll do the same here. So right click, re-import, and we can see the top right hand side is now black. 
So if we go back into the rocks, uh, disable the UV visuals there, we can see now we have our nice rough flat shaded rocks. And then if we go back to our fence, that's a lot more like what I had in mind uh, when I was actually creating the textures. We could probably improve that, maybe use the gray metal, but I think that's perfectly fine for our needs. So I'm gonna come back in and do the last few things. So we just want to get the meshes now into the level. So I'm gonna drag this in and we can put this next to our bucket. We can bring in our lamp. We're gonna to want to make the floor much, much bigger. So we'll make this something like 10 and 10. Now ideally, what you're gonna to want to do um, to avoid weird shadows when we bake the light is you're going to want to create a bigger plane so that we don't have to increase the size here uh, because that can break the shadow mapping so make sure that uh, this wouldn't be used for production you'd want to get a bigger plane which is bigger in blender so that everything scales proportionally but again just to get something very quickly mocked up like we had in the example just to get everything kind of in a scene at least so that is everything together and the final thing is our lamp material here so I'm going to go back into the materials folder, create a new material here. I'm going to call this one M underscore emissive, and we're just going to come in very quickly and create our material. So the first thing we want is the base color, which is going to be a vector three. So we can press V and left click. This is a parameter so that we can change this in a material instance. And I'll just call this one color. I'm going to plug that into the base color and I'm going to create another parameter. So I'm going to press S and left click. And I'm going to call this one emissive or emissive strength. And we quite simply want to multiply that by the color. So color multiplied by the emissive strength will be our emissive color. We can leave all of these because we're not really going to see these on an emissive material. We can apply this and save that. Now I'm not actually changing anything here because this is going to be much easier if we right click on this, create a material instance. We'll call that one M underscore emissive instance. And we want to go back in to our post. We want to apply that to the second material slot, which is our lamp material slot, uh, which at the moment gives us a black light. And then we're going to go into our material instance that we've just created, not the parent material. Uh, and because we've exposed these as parameters, we can very quickly change the color of the light and the emissive strength of the light. So I know in the example I had this as a bit more of an orange with a nice orange glow and quite a high emissive value. So now if we look at our post again, we've got that nice orange glow coming from here. And again, we can improve this and increase this a little bit. Final things would just be to do things like bringing in a skylight. So the default skylight for whatever reason doesn't just work. So we can go and search for a skylight. That one will actually take into account the current sun that we have in. Uh, we can change the sunlight direction so we can get a bit more of a dark moody thing. Bring in a standard light, so maybe some kind of point light. Move this up so it's closer to the lamp. Make that a little bit stronger so we can see its effect. And of course change the color to be closer to that coming from the actual lamp. Uh, we're going to want to get the sky sphere as well and make sure that we refresh the material because it's now nighttime. We want that to be updated. Um, and this is the sort of thing that I then did for the initial speed design. So that's the general concept though. We've got everything kind of in place. We've got everything loaded in. All of the materials are working correctly. Uh, we've used the two different textures to make sure that we have some metallic value to the metallic objects and some nice flat values to the wooden objects. Uh, anything further than this is going to be going into kind of level design. And that wasn't really the idea here. So you can carry on, play around with the different op options that you have inside of the engine. Uh, again, do a nice light bake and get everything set up as you wish. The main objective here though was to get everything in the scene, show that everything is going to come in with the correct scale, the, cor the correct rotation, and of course applying the materials in the way that we've been keeping in mind all the way through the development process of these assets. And like I said, that being the main thing, that we've only got this one material slot, apart from on the post where we've got the lamp material as well, uh, and that we can still get the full kind of spectrum of reflectivity and stuff from that single material. So this has been the workflow uh, of asset creation for things inside of Blender to the Unreal Engine. Uh, just to mention as well what I was kind of alluding to earlier, because we've had to scale the floor so much, uh, you can see that the shadows are looking very blobby and horrible here. Uh, if you ever get that, it's usually because you have a surface that you've had to scale past the uniform one by one. It's not necessarily that the object itself is too big, uh, it's the fact that this is still mapped onto a smaller texture UV map as well. 
uh, but it's the physical object which is being stretched. So, so that is also stretching the shadows. So if you get that issue, uh, all you want to do, like I said, is create uh, maybe a floor this size in Blender by default so that when you bring it in, it is still one by one by one rather than 10 by 10. Just to kind of recap what I meant earlier though. So with all of that done, I'll leave the video here for today. As always, if you enjoy the videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.